All right, friends, if you are into e in any way, shape or form, this is a great episode for you. So I first invited my friend Gamal to come into our Growth Factor program. I got introduced to him through my friend Mark. He said he's amazing. You should have him come in. Oh my gosh, referrals are the best way to meet people. So anyway, I had him come in, do a training. I was totally blown away. I was ready to like start another company, start an e-commerce brand. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, It went on the shelf. It's on the shelf for now. But anyway, I said, I have got to get him to come on to the podcast so that you can hear him. Anyway, he's incredibly humble, incredibly talented, so freaking smart, and I'm thrilled to share his expertise with you. So I'm going to just read his bio for you so you can just get a glimpse of what you're in for so you can understand Um, the brilliance of this guy. So Gamal started, scaled, and sold his seven-figure e-commerce brand in under four years. Before that, he raised about 10 million and has had nine successful business transactions totaling over $50 million while working in M&A, mergers and acquisitions, so buying and selling companies. After selling his brand, He decided to start a coaching program with his wife that teaches his new way of running a brand that helps e-com founders turn their lifestyle businesses into desirable seven-figure businesses that people want to buy. That is amazing. So the program is kind of like an online MBA for e-commerce brands that learn how to scale with marketing, cash flow, and operation systems with a focus on optimizing for simplicity, profits, and enjoyment of life. Codner, Gamal Codner. So Codner is one of only 90 official Shopify and Amazon verified coaches in the world. So when you hear him, um, you know, he when he came and spoke for our Growth Factor group, he had just given a speech for Amazon, for the Amazon people. So it was like, oh my gosh, this guy is has so much knowledge, so much insight, and he just wants to help and serve. Like it's it's a really beautiful combo. So I'm so excited to share his expertise with you. Let's go ahead and play that interview. All right, Gamal, welcome to the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. I am so excited to have you here, share you with our entire audience because you did such an awesome call in our Growth Factor program. I was so, so happy to have you there. Very kind words. Happy to have been there. Yeah, you have a pretty <laughs> dope group. Yeah, it was. I remember Andy signed on. He's like, I think I should have signed on to this call in the beginning. <laughs> like, what am I missing here? So we brought you in. You are an e-com expert. You recently did this really cool, really um, just so insightful training inside of our group that you also gave to Amazon. Um so very well respected in the world of e-com. I know you're a, a shop, what is it called? A Shopify trainer, educator? Yeah, I'm one of their, one of their 90 um, official coaching partners in the world. Official coaching partners. Okay. Um, so you came in and just gave this like, knock your socks off training to our group. Talked about so many things that are actually in alignment with our core values of building community, providing that like relationship with your consumer but how can you do that with e-com? And I wanted to bring you here on the show to really spread that message because there's so much opportunity for spas. I know with COVID, it was very, a lot of people went to, um, all right, e-com, I'm going to sell products online, but it kind of dropped off when we got back into our our flow. Um, But there's, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars being left on the table by people not taking advantage of the stream of revenue. So I want to just take me wherever you want to start with this. Wow. So many places I can go. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with everyone, uh, everything you said. So like during COVID, people saw what was possible because it was really easy. And then things got a little bit more difficult um, for both things happening inside the industry, namely like I, uh, um, Apple's and, and Facebook's fight around privacy, it got increasingly more difficult to not market to your audience, but to see how well your marketing is doing. And so for people who just got in and got like, you know, kind of pregnant with the real easy quick dollar, they're like, yeah, this sounds like a little bit too much work. Let me jump back out of it. Um, and then just kind of externally, a lot of people were home. 
and uh, online shopping kind of doubled in six months. So prior to COVID, it took about 16 years since the start of e-com or online commerce to generate about 15% of the retail market. So all retail along around the world, 15% of it was on e-com before COVID. The first six months of COVID, it jumped at 30%. So that's like unprecedented growth, right? And so it was just so easy for internal and external reasons. Now it's not as easy, but I think it's still an amazing opportunity. And so we could just start there about why I think e-com is still an amazing opportunity and why, even though the rest of the world is saying it's difficult, we're seeing clients double their revenue right now into 2023. And I think spa makes the spa industry is like ripe for the picking because it makes so much sense to launch there. Yeah, let's let's go there because it is, you know, we're but, always um, looking for multiple streams of revenue to make sure that we're building a strong financial foundation. Um, if, if, you know, there ever, God forbid, was any sort of pandemic or anything again, and you already have this set up, you're just already, all right, I pivot right here. And it's not the like freeze what happens, you know? So when you have those different streams of revenue, um, it just makes your choices a lot easier. And when there is a bump in the road, you know, and, and plus more revenue, more opportunity to build your team, to provide a better, um, experience for your clients and patients, et cetera. Plus as spa, you already have the inventory. You already have the patients that you're selling to, you know? So um, I guess maybe, maybe we can start with like, why do people think this is hard in the first place? Like what are the biggest challenges with e-com that we have to overcome? The main part is um, it's not an easy industry to just get started with in scale because in a lot of industries, you just have to understand marketing. The biggest challenge and the thing I'm supporting a lot of my founders with now as clients is understanding cash flow and the importance of that because you have to take possession of physical inventory. And so um, like a service-based business or um, like a service-based business, there's a lot of upfront capital, which e-com does not have. So it's easier to start, right? With five grand, you can start an e-com brand. It's probably going to take you a little bit more to start into a spa Um, but with a spa, a lot of your fixed costs stay with scale. So whether you're serving a hundred clients per month or a thousand or 500, you know, your rent and all that stuff is kind of largely the same, Mm -hmm. um, with e-com it's different. If you want to five X your business, you have to invest in significantly more uh, inventory. And so you're, you kind of have to be ahead of your scale. If you you're doing 50 grand a month now and you want to get to hundred grand, well, before you get there and generate revenue, you have to front cash to buy the inventory to support double your business. So it feels like a lot of the times in order to grow, you have to invest in yourself at each stage of growth. So a lot of people who don't understand cash flow or capital are turned off by that. What happens is they grow. And even though they're growing in revenue, they're not seeing the increase in their bank statements. And so they turn on, that turns off a lot of people. Yeah. And I think there's also, you know, depending on, your financial beliefs. There's a lot of people that are proud that they're bootstrappers and, you know, investing such a huge amount of money without necessarily seeing the returns right away doesn't feel good or right or aligned to them. But it's like, it's almost like that snowball's just starting. And then it's like, there's a point that it just rolls down the hill. Correct. And, you know, a lot of it is just um, perspective Um, there are not a lot of founders who, there's not a lot of practitioners who share what they're doing. A lot of the people who are out sharing information or kind of coaches or gurus have not necessarily done what they are saying. And it's a lot different to build an e-commerce business in theory than from practice. And so, um, that has been the biggest differentiation when you kind of drill down to why people are growing their businesses this way. It's really because they're figuring out for the first time or they've been getting bad advice from their accountants or from whatever advisors they're taking advice from who have not who have never built an actual physical product business. And so that's the main thing. And the second thing is the problem is very fixable, which is the weirdest thing. Um, It's just a matter of understanding that there is other tools available to look at your problem because entrepreneurship is all about problem solving. It's whether you want to pay for this problem and solution with time and wasted energy, 
or just get into the correct solution the first time around. And there's no new problem under the sun. It's just that we have never had that problem yet. So seeking advice from people who've gone through it was what helped me. And now I am in turn helping other people who have cash flow issues. But you also, you were sharing your story. So you you started an e-com company um, that sold beard oil. And I remember you, yeah, I don't have a beard. I don't have any hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you were, you had bought like a hundred thousand in inventory or some massive amount. And I remember you saying I was almost bankrupt and then did X, Y, Z. So having somebody that has actually been in that, like you're a risk taker, you've done that, but then you built that company. Was it like 60,000 in recurring revenue in the first three months or something? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty incredible. So to be able to kind of be in the trenches and understand here's what works and here's what doesn't work. That's the difference. You only figure out these solutions. I say it jokingly. You only figure out these solutions on the brink of bankruptcy or in near-death experiences, <laughs> right? And so if, if that's your risk profile and you love like being up at night and can't sleep in and maxing out your credit cards to barely figure it out, sure thing. But if you'd rather not go through that, um, you know, there are other people who've been on the, the brink of bankruptcy at multiple <laughs> times, including myself. And so, which is so weird though, because prior to me building this agency, I, I, I um, worked for a family office in mergers and acquisitions. And the person there had built and sold, invested in companies, turnaround companies. And that was my experience. And so I knew how to run a real business, but for some reason, I like ignored all of those like fundamentals when growing this online brand. And so like like you mentioned, um, I was growing and scaling this company. We're doing six figures. It was doing great. And then um, I made a big purchase order and lost my advertising account. And I recognized that it was a Ponzi scheme I was running because we were not really doing well, but I didn't stop to think about it because as long as we were generating new revenue from my ads, I was selling product out the door and the new money was essentially coming in to pay back my old um, investments. But when the new money stopped coming in, I realized that I was never really as profitable as I thought. And I had a negative cash flow problem. And so I just had two months to figure things out, went back to my mentors from my prior experience. And they just really gave me the basics of how they turn around businesses. And I applied it to my business. And we, you know, we went to get 40% profit margins, went back to seven figures, had a lot of reoccurring revenue, 3000 people in our subscription program blah, 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 blah. And so I kind of turned our business around, but I had like two months of cash left to figure it out. And so now those kind of blueprints of what we did to run our business, that's what I help clients implement. And so that's how people are thriving within this kind of new era model of running an e-com brand. So I still think it works great, but not a lot of people understand how to do it. Because I was kind of fortunate to have these mentors who have real business experience buying and selling $900 million companies. I pretty much got experience from the best in the world. And I was able to apply that to my kind of small uh, direct to consumer brand. So how much time does this take? Because if you say like, oh, I'm going to start a spa. I mean, our spa owners, our spa CEOs, they, they are feeling kind of the weight of the world on their shoulders right now, because they're hiring people, training people. Some of them are still in the room. So if we say like, Hey, let's add this other thing, then they're going to, you know, that's, it's just not realistic if they want to have a balanced life. You know, many of them have small children. Um, they're not exercising. They're not doing lunches, you know, all the things to make sure that we are our best self. So adding something else, it's like, how can you even talk about that? My wife and I were just talking about this earlier, like how can people do more than one thing and do either of them well? And it's usually true, right? The man who chases two rabbits eventually catches none. And so, um, but the caveat to this is if the second thing is adjacent to what you're already doing. And that's the beauty of this. I'm not saying start a tour of business or Airbnb or something that's completely unrelated. I'm suggesting how about you launch your own line of skincare products that you can easily add an additional five minute conversation to your customers and slowly build the word up in your local area and then eventually across the US by already doing the same things, like having content around the same conversations you're privately having with your customers, sharing your background, um, 
and letting the rest of community building just happen for itself. So I think for spas, it is a very small additional amount of energy to put into adding this additional revenue stream because it's already an adjacent to, I would imagine your subject matter expertise and who your customers are already coming to you for. Like, even if you don't start and you're a national hit in month one, you can at least sell your existing products to your existing clients and add an additional um, stream of revenue to your existing location. So I think it makes a ton of sense. What what are the startup costs with something like this? So say I'm a spa, let's say that I'm doing, you know, maybe 750,000 in revenue a year. So not huge, but, you know, decent. And um, I'm wanting to get additional stream of revenue. My goal in life is to get my entire revenue to about 2 million between spa, between e-com. Where do I go? What do I do? Yep. So the main things that you have to do is startup costs is um, create product. So packaging, branding, design, all that stuff. Actual product, right? Let's call it moisturizer for lack of better, you know, just launch it on moisturizer product first. Um, And then uh, web development costs. That's it. And so those are the main three costs. And so um, with the right resources, I'm big on frugality. Uh, Let's give you the numbers. So packaging and branding, we've got a resource for a thousand bucks. So give you everything. Design, brand packaging, logos, all that stuff. Um, I'm a big believer in private labeling to start. If you're not obsessed with creating your own line, you know, once you get to a certain point, a product is about as good as another product, as long as it has the main ingredients in it. So I would recommend connecting with an already private label manufacturer who's already behind the scenes creating some of the best products that and you're spas, probably recommending. Yeah. Estheticians know there's tons of private label skincare companies. Okay, cool. So get in there with low minimum order quantities. You could probably get a bunch of startup products for 2,500 to 5K and website design, another 2,500 to 5K. So around $10,000 or less, you can start up an e-commerce brand who can easily be generating an extra six figures in income within the next 12 months. Wow. I love that. I love that. Not that that difficult. Because the the math to six figures is easy. It's one product selling about 35 bucks. Um, eventually selling 10 of them a day, that's that's a you know a $360,000 a year business. So if you have 10 clients coming to your spa, you can eventually sell to them or people on the internet. It's not that difficult. So we, you may or may not know the answer to this, um, but with Shopify specifically, some of the um, obstacles that come up is there's certain ingredients in skincare, certain products that are not able to be sold on Shopify. So do you know anything about that or any, is, is that something that is put out by Shopify? Is that something that's put out by, you know, the government? Like, where does that come yeah. from? Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you kind of why it is that way. So I started off learning Facebook ads in 2013 by selling skincare products. Um, and I was spending five to $10,000 a day, eventually on selling skincare products for other people. And the thing is, a lot of people misrepresent and make claims regarding certain ingredients, which over time, Facebook or Shopify can't tell which person is an actual licensed um, uh, thought leader versus a random 21-year-old who's starting up an e-com brand making a ton of claims. So how they they, um, police that is by taking the common thread or a common ingredient that's in a lot of these negative claims and just saying, if you talk about this, we're just going to put you in jail. And so that's typically what happens. And it really depends on either Facebook has their own list, Shopify has their own list, and the government also has their own list. And it's constantly evolving. And so something could be on the list um, this month and six months from now, it's not and vice versa. So you just kind of have to be aware of what's going on and just stay on top of the ingredients list. That being said, there's a ton of decent products without those controversial ingredients that you can still launch and do very well with. Maybe those topics that you can't sell online or can't publicly advertise or the the, uh, products that you sell in store and in location. Yeah, I think what we've come up with with a lot, like 
at one point there was a like salicylic acid, which is a very common ingredient in tons of skincare. And I'm pretty sure that that was, there's others like hydroquinone that, you know, in some, like in Canada, you're not allowed to do hydroquinone. There's a lot of countries that you can't do it. So those make sense, but there were some really common basic ingredients that were like, what's going on here? But okay. So there's places we just have to review those lists and, and check those out. What are your... And the- and okay. then and finally, um, cause I had some products who were banned, but it's, it's like all bots that are scanning. So one of the things that I did to whitelist my products is just, just request a manual review and say, Hey, this thing is flagged, but I'd love to get on the phone with the rep and just talk to them about your credentials, talk to them about your quality. And if you're private labeling, um, they will have all of the receipts about like, um, like the quality and efficacy, efficacy of the products. And you just share that with them. And oftentimes I've been able to manually override my ban and get my products whitelisted. So that's another thing you could do too. So with your beard oil, you just had the one product, right? At or first. You, at first. Cause with skincare, we usually have you know, a variety, like an entire, I'm wondering if there's anything different in the strategy between here's our one product and we're going to put everything on like riding our winner, or are we looking at like the brand as a whole and having multiple SKUs? Good question. So oftentimes when I support founders there that are having cash flow issues, the number one indicator when they're like, man, I'm making money, but doesn't feel like it. The number one indicator is they have too many SKUs in their inventory. And so I think starting lean and what I, my friend Leon and I like to call having a few hit records is a better strategy than trying to just release an album where one, you know, only one of two of your products are probably going to be hits and on repeat. And you have allocated all your time, energy, your financial resources into five or six other products that nobody wants because you allocate capital to slow moving products instead of keeping your fast moving products in hand. Um, And then secondly, you stretch your marketing dollars. So if you have two hit records versus 10 products with only two hit records, instead of advertising on ads or in your social across all 10 products and kind of diluting the impact that you have with your results, if you only had two hit records and allocated all of your marketing resources to the ones that you know people want, it's just a better result. So I would say start slow. Oftentimes that happens when you you kind of idolize a brand, a seven to eight figure brand, and you're looking at their year five strategy as your plan to get started in year one. And that doesn't really work. That's not to say you can't get to a 10 product suite, but you don't need to start. And it's oftentimes better to create, you know, less distractions and have um, faster penetration when you have like two or three products to start. So with... Um... Brick and mortar spa, a lot of times we use um, like an ordering strategy where we're setting pars. So we're looking at like, you know, how many, what's the average of how many we sold in the month. So we're usually doing par plus three. We're doing um, our ordering specifically around those numbers so that we can have our numbers. We order in the beginning of the month. A lot of times the companies will give us, if we do one big order, we'll get more of a discount or we'll get different ones free. Are the strategies for ordering similar in e-com than they are in spa or are you is there different pieces yeah um, i use different analogy or different terms but it sounds very similar so you just want to look at sales velocity how much you're selling of this SKU on average per day per month and how much do you uh how long does it take for you to place an order and receive product and making sure that you at least multiply those two numbers to know how much you need to have on minimum to always keep in stock. So if you're selling 10 per day and it takes 10 days to get here, that means you need to have a hundred of them in stock to always um, to always be able to sell product. And so it's similar terms. And if you want to grow by 10 or 20% over the next few months, and you would just add a multiplier on your order and quantity. So it's very similar. Okay. And um as far as like, you know, you talked about ad strategy. Are we doing ads in a different way for e-com than we are for, you know, getting someone to come in and get a service at a spa? Is there like a different strategy? 
Um, well, I don't, I don't quite know what the strategy is for spa. So what's the 20 second strategy on that? Yeah. So let's say it's, I mean, it's just a mini funnel, right? So it's like, get, um, enter your name and email to get X, Y, Z. So, and then you're just doing a nurture sequence, getting them in. It's very, you know, book your appointment, get your first wax at $67, get $20 off your next service. But with e are we having to like talk about the product? Are we going directly? So we, with, with spa, it's, we want them on our email list. We're nurturing them there, but I've noticed a lot on Instagram with products. It's like directly to the checkout page, but you're not necessarily getting their contact information. Yeah. Um, great summary. So I think there's kind of two things going on at one time. And so if you understand customer journeys, which everyone listening here has been listening to your podcast, so they do. In summary, there are people who are problem and solution aware, and they're only problem that people who are problem aware. So you don't want to waste people's time giving it giving them like five days to ask for your sale if they're already looking for the solution, right? Maybe their favorite product is out of stock or they've had something about their favorite product and they're looking for a replacement. Because oftentimes these are $50 or less products. You don't need a whole lot of information for people who are both product and solution aware. So you want to have some of your budget to have a product in use uh, demonstration video. This is how it works. This is who I am. Here are my credentials. My clients love it. Here's how you use it. Here's how much it costs. Have a budget set aside for that. But then you want to also set a budget aside for people who don't know that they're ready to invest in this product yet. And you want to have a lead magnet for them. It may be five skincare tips for women over 50. It may be, you know, three skincare tips for fill in the blank, whatever your your product um, solves. And that is a lead magnet. That is a download. That is an email nurture sequence to educate them about who, what the solution is, who you are, why you're qualified to serve them. And that's a slower sales process. So I, I always have budgets allocated for both. So I'm always developing both audiences. I'm not leaving money on the table if I don't have to. Okay, I love that. I love that. I didn't even think about that as two different groups of people, but it makes so so much sense to name them in that way. Mm-hmm. So if I am a spa owner and I am like, oh my gosh, I'm so ready to do this. Where do I go? What do I do? Obviously we want to go to your program, but For what sure. are what are my softwares? What are my things, like my step-by-step of what I need to do? Yep. Um, so if you don't have a Shopify site or products already, um, then it would be to figure out what community you serve, have a clear understanding of what's your customer profile like, how do you want to differentiate yourself in this huge market and build out a brand, get Shopify site up because that's the platform I recommend to develop your site, get product. Then some of like the also um kind of important tech stacks is you need a customer support platform. Uh, We use a tool called Gorgeous. We've got a partnership with them where you can get a sweet deal. I'll drop an affiliate link uh, below, but that really helps with the problem of, I don't have a lot of time. So if anyone emails you, if anyone kind of comments under your ads, if anyone chats with your Shopify site, it aggregates all that into one place. So your customer support person isn't having to check in six or seven different places. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the most, the next important tech stack is Clavio for email. We're a partner with them too. Uh, that is the best email and CRM and SMS solution for Shopify. And then you want to have a review system. I like judge.me, but there are a bunch of other ones. Judge.me is just really affordable. It's under 20 bucks a month and it could do a lot of what, uh, the other, you know, kind of really expensive platforms use. And that's what we use for our third 3,000 plus uh, reviews and it handled it just fine for, you know, a couple of bucks a month. So those are the three most important things to get started with. Wonderful. Well, um, tell everybody, tell us your links, tell us how to connect with you, tell us how to uh, learn about your programs, all the things, and we'll make sure that we, le- we leave all the links under the show as well. Yeah, um, so we serve people interestingly. So we kind of have a minimum threshold too. So existing businesses who are doing six figures, um, 
we'd love to support you in one of our coaching programs or our one-on-one -on -one program. And that could be found at our website, codner.co, or I talk about a lot of my stuff on my Instagram, Gamal Codner on IG. Um, if you are just getting started and you are not yet there, um, I have a place for you too, namely on my YouTube. I put a bunch of content out on YouTube just about how to get started, how to differentiate, and um, it's Codner Co. on YouTube. So I'll share all the links with you. And depending on where you're at, um, you could either just get started with YouTube or just jump right in and get our support through coaching or one-on-one -on -one to scale your e-com, the e-com side of your spa business. I love that. Well, we um, we recommend Shopify always. We recommend Clavio. I'm going to, um, I also just want to throw out there one of our strategic partners, Mango Mint. They're a spa and salon software. Um, they integrate with Shopify and Clavio. They, a lot of the issues <clears throat> with inventory and Shopify and spa, uh, or not Shopify, but like doing e commerce, sometimes people would have some some type of software, but it wasn't keeping track of what was sold in store versus online. There wasn't, they weren't talking to each other. And Mango Mint has solved that by having the integration. So you can sell something in person. You can also sell something through your e-com store and it makes less work for you. So um, there are solutions because I know in spa, a lot of times the software is still kind of stuck in the nineties, but um, <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there little by little. <laughs> That's so, hilarious. <laughs> well, Gamal, thank you so much. This is so insightful, so inspiring. I told you on the last call, I was like, okay, I think I'm going to start an ecom too. But I've got there I've got go. a couple other things up my sleeve first, so we're going to work on those. But uh, please find Gamal, follow him. His Instagram's wonderful. I love, um, you know, he's always popping up in my feed with just really creative, funny, inspirational, and educational posts. Um, check him out there. And of course, uh, hang out in the Spa Marketing Made Easy Facebook group and we can keep that conversation going there. All right, Kamal, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.